If you don't know anything about 3D character animation and want to become a pro at it, well, you found the right video. Today we're going to be taking you from complete noob to look out Pixar, here I come. Welcome to a new CG Geek tutorial, my name is Steve, also known as Steve Rucci. And because you guys voted for it, today we're going to be learning the basics of character animation and the fundamentals of how to animate characters inside of Blender, because Blender's free and awesome. And as you guys know, since I'm like the best at animation, why not? <laughs> okay, maybe I don't want to put that in my demo reel. And also I'm excited to announce the new CG Geeks Discord server where all of us geeks are hanging out, answering questions, getting critique on our finished projects like animations for example. So if you want to hang out with me along with thousands of other cool CG artists, go ahead and follow that link in the description to the Discord and I'll see you over there. The 3D character models that we'll be animating today is from the Blender Cloud. There is actually two really cool models that you can download on the Blender Cloud. There's Rain and then there's Vincent. These are completely free finished models that are rigged, ready to go for animation. So go ahead and download one of these two models. There'll be a link below. And actually character creation has been something I've wanted to do on the channel for a long time. It's just kind of hard prioritizing what to do next. But if you want to see that sooner than later, leave a like on the video to let me know. Oh, and what is this? 80% of you guys aren't subscribed? That's just a little hurtful. If you guys want to make my day, smash that subscribe button to join the Geek Squad. And with that said, let's roll that intro and start animating. Oh yeah, same old intro. Uh, still working on that new one, but uh, hey, let's watch it anyway. This is taking too long. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare, the online learning community for creatives where millions of people are already taking the next steps in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of courses on exciting topics like illustration, design, photography, video, and a whole lot more. I've been watching a course on Skillshare by Tom Froze on illustrating expressive, stylized characters because I'd love to take my pencil art to the next level in 2020. And this course has been a lot of fun with some really creative tips on how to draw characters in more exaggerated, stylized expression. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you guys actually have the opportunity to watch this course or any others free. Yep, the first thousand users to join with my link in the video description will get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. So I'm using Rain, the character from the Blender Cloud, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up inside of Blender here, and then you just wanna click Allow Execution to let your character fully load up into Blender. I've been playing around with this rig for a few days now, doing some basic character animating, getting familiar with it. It's a really easy rig to work with and not hard to get some good looking animations with. So I'm gonna assume that you know just a little bit of the basics of navigating in Blender. For example, the middle mouse button to kind of pan around in 3D space, and then G to move bones, R to rotate, S to scale. These are just a few of the very basic navigational things. And if at any point you're not sure which button I'm pressing, I have the screencast keys set up down here so you can see what button was pressed in the corner there. So let's get into some animating. This is the rig settings here. You can turn on and off things like the controls for the hair and the bones and the fingers. This is great for turning on and off different bones depending on what you're animating. You don't want a whole bunch of bones kind of crowding your space, getting in the way when you're trying to animate. And actually we can turn off the FK bones for now and just leave the IK enabled. But that's really all I'm going to touch in the settings and you can just hit N then to close off your properties tab there. So the first thing I wanna do is bring in my timeline. So I'm just gonna grab the corner window here and pull it up to make a new window. And I'll change this window over to the animation timeline right here. And as you can see, we now have a timeline. This will show us what frame we're at. So where we are in our animation, really necessary for doing any sort of animating in Blender. And it can also do some basic keyframe editing inside the timeline, which is again, really necessary. So to jump right into how keyframing works in Blender, on frame one here, I'm just going to grab the foot bone there and we'll just pull it up so it's like in a stepping position there. And if I hit I, this will allow me to insert a keyframe. So I can choose location rotation right there. And as you can see, we now have a orange diamond marking that there's a keyframe on frame one. And if I scroll through, you'll see that there's no animation because you need more than one keyframe to have motion. So let's go ahead and add one more keyframe, just scrolling through our timeline to frame 20. Here I'll grab the foot, pull it down to the ground somewhere like that. And then if I hit I and choose location rotation one more time, I'll insert a second keyframe. And now if I scrub through the timeline, you can see we have our first character motion. And like I said, here you can do some basic keyframe adjustments then by grabbing that keyframe and moving along the timeline if you want it to take more frames to complete the action or maybe less frames to complete the action to make it happen faster. And this is where you do your basic keyframe editing. If you want to do more advanced keyframe editing, you're gonna to want to split your window here 
and switch this one over to the animation dope sheet. Here, if I zoom in a little bit and drop this down, you can see we have control over a lot more of the keyframes on this. So there's a keyframe for every different axis in 3D. And here, if I zoom in a little bit, slide it over, you can see that I can move a keyframe for just the X rotation, for example, or maybe I'd wanna move just the Z location keyframe. So this is for kind of keyframe tweaking and where you're going to do that for retiming your animation. Now, every time you do any sort of keyframing in Blender, it's automatically done on a linear curve. This means that as the animation progresses, if I pull this out just a little bit here, you're going to see that it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle, and then comes to a slow stop. And this is because it's on a curve. And you can see this if you switch over from the dope sheet to the graph editor. You can see on our animation here that we have it laid out as a curve. If I just adjust our handle here to zoom that in a little bit. And this is gonna be how you tweak your animation to get more of the right motion and speed that you want. So for example, if you didn't want this to come to a slow resting stop, but more of a stomp, you would grab the handle here for the Z location. So as you can see, the Z location is selected right there. And if you didn't want the other axis is visible, you could just turn them off with these eyeballs. So I'll just turn off the rotation because we don't need those right now. And if I grab this handle, and rotate it to be a sharp point at the end. Now you'll see that it comes down fast. Boom, boom. And you might want to do the same thing for these other keyframes. Just make sure that they come down to a harsh stop. And then it's going to be more like your foot stomps to the ground. And if I pull this keyframe in to make it happen a little bit faster, you can see, boom, you have it come to a stop instead of come to a gradual stop. And this is how you would tweak your keyframe animation. Now, actually, what we're going to be doing today is starting with animation blocking. This is sort of going through and every second or so in your animation hitting a key pose and then coming back and adding the in-between frames later. This is the process that professionals use to hit the key poses that they want in an animation. And then you'll work on the in-between frames to polish that animation later. So to do this, though, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this from a linear curve to a constant curve. And you can do that by just hitting the T key if you're in the timeline here, hit the T key and choose an interpolation of constant. Make sure all your keyframes are selected when you choose constant and you'll see that it's now a sharp change. So this is just gonna change from one pose to the next pose. And this is the process of animation blocking and that's what we're gonna start off doing for our character animation. So now that we know the basics of adding keyframes and adjusting the timing and speed of the keyframes, we're ready to actually do some cool character animating inside of Blender. So for starters, what you're gonna need is reference, reference, reference. Animation reference is basically the most important part of animating. And even the most professional of professionals will use video reference before going to animate something because it's really impossible to imagine what a natural human movement would look like without first visualizing it and seeing some reference of it actually happening. So either go ahead and take a video clip of yourself acting like an idiot in your backyard for some character animation reference, or if you'd rather use something that's already out there online, there's a ton of great character animation reference available online and on YouTube. One of my favorite references for animation is Kevin Perry's 100 Ways to Walk video where he does all kinds of different ways humans will walk. It's great for character reference as this kind of exaggerated movements, which is perfect for 3D animation and what we're gonna be using today actually. So I recommend picking one of the reference walks in his video for your animation today and we're going to be going ahead and blocking out some of this animation. Another video that I recommend checking out for some good reference along with a lot of animation tips. If you're getting into 3D animation this is still a really great video to watch as there's tons of tips and techniques that will translate over to 3D animation and be super useful. So with your reference video on hand you're ready to start character animating inside of Blender. If you want to match your character animation exactly you can actually add it in as a background image in 3D space by going shift a and then adding in an image background right there as you can see but I don't want to match this animation exactly I'm just going to be using it closely as reference so what I'm going to do is start off by clearing these keyframes by going X and deleting keyframes and then if you hit alt R and alt G it will reset the rig to its original pose which is exactly what we want and I'm going to go ahead and close off our extra tab here for animation because we'll use that later on for tweaking our animation. So the animation cycle that I'm going to be animating today is the skip, just because it's a bit more interesting and emotive than a basic walk. And what you're gonna do is you just wanna scrub through it real slowly and pick some of the key poses out of it. So as you can see, there's the pose where he's up in the air, his arms are swinging and his legs are moving. And then there's the pose where he lands on the ground and his legs are kind of close together as they're switching positions, which is basically the two 
key poses in this skip, as well as the basic key poses and pretty much any sort of walk cycle. There's the legs up, and then there's the legs crossing. So we're gonna start off by making this pose here, the up in the air, arms swing in, jolly old skip -a -ski. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to frame one, and what can actually save you a lot of time in animating keyframes is clicking this button right here, which is an automatic keyframe insertion. Basically, if you now move any sort of bone and let go, it's gonna automatically add in a keyframe. So that will save you a little bit of time in case you might forget to add a keyframe at some point. I always use this option. So go ahead and leave that enabled. And we're just going to hit three to jump into side view and start making the pose that we see here. So for blocking, you always best off starting with the center bone of your character. In this case, it's going to be the hip controller right here and getting that in place and then basically working off there. So for this animation, I'm going to first pose the hips, then I'm going to pose the legs and then the arms and etc. And also since we're doing a cycle, we're not going to be moving our character horizontally at all. We're just going to be keeping it in one place up and down like it's walking on a treadmill. And if you wanted to animate it later, you could just animate this master center bone for the character. So I'm just going to start off by pulling up the pelvis bone here a bit because we're at the height of our skip in this pose. And then I'm going to rotate the hip bone a little bit because this leg is gonna be the one up in the air. So I'm going to rotate that. Then I'm gonna grab the left foot there and I'm going to pick it up in the air for a jolly old skip. We'll rotate a little bit, position it something like that. And then this foot we want to be kind of down. This is the one pushing off the ground. So we're just going to kind of zoom around our character using the middle mouse button. We'll go ahead and rotate the step controller bone here to push it up on their toes a little bit. And then go ahead and just pull that back. And that looks like a good position for the legs. Now I'll go ahead and position the hands because this leg is forward, the hand, this hand will be kind of swinging backwards right along here. And you just wanna keep this arm nice and relaxed looking. We'll kinda of, kind of throw it back there, rotate it. Then positioning the right hand as well. This one's gonna be up in the air, opposite the leg that's up in the air. So we'll go ahead and position this somewhere around there. We're doing a jolly old skip. And there's our basic blocked out skipping animation. We can go ahead and block it out just a little bit more, but something like that is looking pretty good for the height of the jump here. I might rotate that toe down a little bit like she's jumping off the ground there. And there's the basic first pose. We're gonna come back and tweak a few of these bones later. So I'm just jumping forward to frame 10 in the timeline here. I'll zoom in a little bit with my middle mouse button. And we're going to go ahead to the next major pose to block it out. So our next major pose is the leg crossover as our character lands on the ground, as you can see right here. So this is going to be arms at the waist, legs crossing over each other. So again, we're gonna start off by grabbing the center pelvic bone. We're gonna pull it down because our our character is kind of landing on the ground here. This foot is going to come all the way down to the ground and be flat on the ground now. So we want to rotate that back to be a nice flat foot and position it on the ground. And this is the leg that's going to be crossing over, being picked up for the next skip in the animation here. You also want to rotate the hip bones because we're no longer jumping off that leg. So we can go ahead and straighten out the hip bones for this keyframe. The arms, as I mentioned, have to be swinging down to the waist now because of course we're coming down at the bottom of our skip here. So I'm just pulling the arms down to a sort of neutral position along the side of our character. And there's our basic crossover pose. Then you're gonna wanna hit A to grab all your bones and then under the timeline here, hit T and choose constant. Because as I mentioned, we're only blocking the animation right now and we're not working on the in-between frames. So as you can see here now, we have our two poses, the top of our skip and then the landing of our skip with the next leg pulling up for the next jump. Now what we can do to save on a lot of time is when you have a character walking or skipping, the pose with their left leg is going to be the same with their right leg. So what we can do is you can actually copy our first pose here where our left leg is the one up in the air, hit A to select all of your bones there and go pose, copy pose. And then what we can do is move on to where we want the right leg to be the one up in the air, which will jump to frame 24. And instead of having to reanimate this, we can just go pose, paste posed, flipped. And this will go ahead and put our right knee up in the air like it is with the left one here and basically just flip the animation. And you can see this works for the most part. There's a few keyframes that need to be tweaked where the elbows, as you can see right here, aren't pointing the right direction. So what I have to do for this is just go to that keyframe, grab our elbow and pointer. This is where the elbow will be pointing at and just pull it down so we have the arm at the waist there. I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of variation to this one by pulling that arm down a little bit there, something like that. And that pose looks pretty good to me. Now we can do the same thing for our second keyframe here. Just copy it by hitting A to select all the bones, pose, copy pose, jump to frame 30. We're just going by increments of 10 right now to keep it simple. And we'll go paste, pose, flipped again. And now you can see we have our character in the in-between pose, but flipped this time. 
As I mentioned, you might have to tweak a few of these bones just a little bit, mainly just the hand bones, it seems, get a little bit messed up when you do this. And now all we need is one more major keyframe to make this loopable, and that is the first keyframe. So all we need to do is jump over frame one with all of the bones selected again, go pose, copy pose, and we're just going to paste this one not flipped at frame 40 here. So just paste pose right there. And if I made our timeline only last 40 frames, which is all the keyframes we have here, so I'll just change the end here to be 40. Actually, we're gonna go 39 because we want one less frame because we don't want that duplicate frame in there from 40 to zero. You can see that our animation would cycle. Do -do -do. So this is our first pass of character animation blocking. And this is when you wanna make some of your more major tweaks maybe to the animation. So I might wanna take our first frame here and just make it a little bit more exaggerated. Let's give her a little bit more height in her skip with putting a little bit of extra bounce in her step. We'll go ahead and pull this keyframe up a little bit. Pull it back a little bit like she's really jumping forward into that animation a little bit more. And this is where you can kind of go ahead and just push the limits of what a normal character could do because we're going for more of a stylized cartoon animation and make it just a little bit more exaggerated at this stage. So we're just giving her a lot of energy in her step, a lot of energy in her arms. Maybe we'll rotate those hips forward just a little bit. And if you're happy with your more extreme pose, then you can go ahead and of course copy it to those other locations again by going copy pose, jump into frame 20 and pasting the pose Flipped. You might want to tweak that elbow again right there, but otherwise it's pretty good and ready to go. And then of course you just need to paste that pose again on frame 40. So now we have our major poses sort of blocked out here. We need to work on our in-between pose. For the in-between pose, I'm going to pick the frame where both feet are on the ground and one arm is up in the air. This is sort of the transition pose between the two poses we already blocked out here. So jumping back into Blender, you'll see that at frame five, we'll wanna go ahead and make this pose. So starting off with our hips, we want the character to have landed on the ground because all feet are touching the ground at this point. So we're gonna pull that center pelvic bone down a little bit grab the feet and land them on the ground as well. If you accidentally hide your bone, you probably pushed H and it's Alt H to unhide it. That's just something that I tend to do a lot because it's right next to G. So I thought I'd mention that. Placing the feet on the ground, pulling the center hip bone down to give a nice sort of landing position. This arm should still be up in the air. We'll just pull that elbow down a little bit. This arm should be kind of swinging to the side. That should work as a pretty good in-between frame. If we kind of scrub through here, you can see we have that in-between pose. So now that we have these three keyframes, these are the only major keyframes we really need in this skip walk animation cycle that we're creating. So all we need to do is copy and paste these frames now as we were doing earlier to make it a walk cycle. So I have these three frames and I actually wanna pull frame 20 in to be a little bit tighter. So now we can kind of work on the timing of these keyframes. So we have these first few frames and it takes a little too long to get to frame 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in a few frames. Maybe you'll drop it at about frame 16 right there. So you can see we have that. Do, 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 do. Perfect. And now all we need to do is copy and paste our landing pose flipped for the other side. So I'm going to grab keyframe five, grab all the bones on keyframe five and go pose, copy pose. And then I'm gonna to jump to frame 20 or 21 here. We'll say 21 and go pose, paste, posed, flipped. Perfect, all we need to do is correct those two elbow and bones because those didn't flip properly. And that looks pretty good. With all of our bones selected, we can grab these frames here, pull them in at about five frames after 21. So we're gonna go to 26 with these and then grab our last major keyframe there. And we're gonna position that at 31. Now we just need to make our finished timeline last only 30 frames because that is the number of keyframes we have now. And we should have a nice cycling keyframe animation. And we do. So this is happening a little fast right now, and I mainly want it to hold its key pose of the character being in the air longer. So I'm gonna grab all the keyframes after frame one, and we're gonna make this last until about 10 frames there. So the jump in the air lasts a while, and then we're gonna move all of these frames forward to frame 30. So we have those gaps where our character is in the air. That looks pretty good, and if we adjust our timeline for those keyframes now, you can see that we have a better looking skip animation. So now that our basic keyframes are looking pretty good, it's time to add a little bit more of those adjustment keyframes that I was talking about. So here's where you can spend a lot of time sort of perfecting your animation a little bit, starting by adding in a few more keyframes to different bones. So I'm gonna hit N to bring up our character layers here and turn on the FK bones. This will allow me to sort of rotate and stretch the shoulders. So on frame one, when the left leg is up, we might want these shoulders to kind of be rotated to match that a little bit. So what I can do is I can grab the waist here and rotate it to kind of match the swing of the hips there a little bit as well. Then we'll go ahead and jump back down to frame 15, 
rotate that back to be more in the center there. And then at frame 20, we would rotate it the opposite direction because our character is now jumping with the other leg there. So we'd rotate that along the Y that way. So we might have to move the hand bones a little bit to match that movement. And then you can see we have that little extra skip in the shoulders as they're kind of rotating. You can see if you look straight down a little bit more. The other bone you might want to adjust in some of these frames is the chest bone. When our character is at the top of her jump, there might be a little bit more stretched out. And when it lands on the ground, you might be a little bit more hunched over. Here you might want to work on the hair animation. So in the character properties tab here, you can turn on the hair. We can go ahead at frame one and position the hair for however we want it. At the top of the skip, the hair would kind of be blowing back here. So we can go ahead and grab these keyframes, position it so the hair is kind of blowing back on the head there, as you can see here. Jump forward to the landing keyframe. Here the hair will be kind of coming in. At frame 15, the hair should be kind of bouncing against the back of the head a little bit. Pacing that first frame at the end again, we can see we now animated the hair to kind of go with the animation. And this is where you can see the animation blocking just makes it a lot easier to make sure you're hitting those key poses. But now we're done with the blocking and we can tweak some of the curves on the animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit A to grab all of our keyframes. Under the timeline here, I'm going to hover my mouse and hit T and switch it back to B0 curve. Now if I play it, you can see we have our character animation with those curves. So the animation looks pretty good, but again, we have those keyframes that kind of look like they're floating because everything is on a busier curve. So here's where you can tweak your animation using the graph editor. So I'm gonna split my window like I showed earlier, and I'm going to switch this window over to the animation graph editor. And as you can see, you have all these confusing keyframes that might kind of intimidate you a little bit, but we're only gonna focus on a few bones to tweak here. So I'm gonna grab the pelvic bone in the center of the mesh first, and we're only going to be focusing on the Y location of this bone. So I'm going to turn off all of the other axes of this bone. So we just have the Y location, making it nice and easy to see what we have selected. And here you can see this is where we want the character to kind of gain some momentum falling. So she comes to a faster stop when she kind of lands at the bottom of her skip. All we need to do is grab our handle and pull this to be a much tighter landing for that bone right there. And as you can see now, our character lands with a little bit more weight. So we want to go ahead and do that for the first time the character lands as well, making it nice and sharp. So our character lands with a little bit more weight to her body. The other thing we want to do is adjust the timing a little bit of a few of the bones, not all of them, just the center pelvic bone. Because right now it's taking five frames to jump in the air and then 10 frames to come to a landing, which is pretty fakey looking because gravity will be pulling you down on a jump just as fast as you're going up. So we need to adjust that, and that is where we want to go to the dope sheet, like I showed earlier. So we'll switch from the graph editor here over to the dope sheet, zoom in here a bit, drop this down. So to make our character float a little bit less in the air, we're going to grab the Y bone here in our dope sheet. And on our first jump here, it should land on the ground a little bit quicker than 10 frames. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the falling animation there, and we'll pull it over 3 frames. So it's landing at frame 7 now instead of frame 10. And then we're going to go to the next jump here. And we're going to do the same thing where we're going to pull this frame over about three frames. So our character lands on the ground a little bit faster after her jump. So just with those two keyframes offset, you can already see that the animation looks a lot better. Now the other thing that you can actually tweak in the graph editor that makes animating really easy is as I can see here, I think maybe her feet are a little bit too far spread apart. I think it might be a little bit nicer looking if they're a little bit closer together. So what you can do is you can switch now from the dope sheet back to the graph editor. Foot bone selected to make it easy, we'll just turn off the visibility of all the different locations except for the X location over here, leaving just the X location, the one selected. So then in the graph editor, I can hit A to just select all of the X location keyframes. And then if I hit G and Y, you can see I can move the location of that X keyframe anywhere I want along the X axis. And this is really great because you keep all of your keyframe animation data and you're just tweaking all of those keyframes along one axis. So by hitting G and Y and then holding shift to make just a very minor change, I can pull that leg in a little bit closer and I think that just looks a little bit better. I can do the same thing with the other foot there and just pull that leg in a little bit tighter there, something like that. And now you can see as our character moves, the legs are a little bit tighter together and I think that just looks a little bit more natural. So now you can spend as much time as you'd like going through and tweaking this animation. If you maybe want the head to kind of rock with the animation, you could rotate that a little bit at the peak of the jump. And now you can see you have a little bit of head movement, making that look a little bit more natural. Adding a little bit of rotation along the Y to the hips to kind of have them twist a little bit as the body twists with the legs can look nice. And with just doing a little bit of tweaking on your character, you can see that you now have a nice sort of skipping animation 
going on. And uh, if you wanted to turn off the rig, you just hit the little eyeball up there so you can see what the character looks like without a rig. So there's our finished basic character animation. We have a nice little skipping character, jolly, jolly skipping along the road here. And uh, this was a lot of fun to do. So that's the basics of character animating inside of Blender. This is just a simple animation that we whipped up in what, 20, 30 minutes? Not too much work at all. And as you can see, it's a ton of fun to play around with. If this is too normal of an animation for you though, you just grab a center bone and really get the character stretching going on. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, created some cool animations. And as I said, we now have a CG Geeks Discord server. So if you created some animation and you want some feedback on it, go ahead and join our Discord server. Hang out with me and thousands of other CG artists where we're all creating cool things together and sharing what we create over there. So now I encourage you to go ahead and create some more extreme animations. Here's one that I worked out in an evening the other day. And as you can see, it's just a lot of fun to get some more extreme animating. And that's where you really need the character blocking to make sure you hit all of those key poses throughout an animation like this. And here's another walk cycle that I made using the character rig. Just a lot of fun to play around with different styles of walks and whatnot. So I hope you had some fun learning how to animate characters in Blender. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up and let me know if you had any comments in the comment section below. But now I must go, so I will see you all at another time. Bye-bye.